Hello and welcome everyone. Delighted to have all of you here. These are so fun because I get to see lots of familiar names on the list and some new ones too. So welcome back to those of you I know and welcome to those who are exploring this. Uh, today we're talking about coaching as a workplace skill and quite frankly part of me just wants to go Duh, of course it's a workplace skill. It just absolutely makes sense. And on top of that, hey, let's back that up. Let's get some definitions in here. Let's explore exactly how. So where are we going in this quick 30 minutes that we have together today? Our agenda, we're going to define skill. Uh, that will be quick and easy. We also are going to be looking at skills wanted in job candidates. Uh, we'll look at skills that impact success. I had fun looking these up on the internet. I uh, have skills from entry level to executive level. And then what we're going to do is talk about coaching as a skill. We'll define coaching. We'll talk about coaching applied as a workplace skill. And then, of course, share resources with you. So getting started, what exactly is a skill? When I did a search on Google, here's what popped up. The ability to do something well. Expertise. Okay, that makes sense. I think we can buy into that one easily. Now let's really dig into, okay, what skills make a difference? So one of the sources I went to when I was researching this, what skills are wanted in job candidates, was on Bloomberg. And as I go through this list, uh, those of you that have completed coach training, think about your coaching competencies. And think about how much uh, this overlaps or is similar to the competencies or skills we say we have as coaches. And I'd love to get your comments. It's so much fun when either you raise your hand and you come on live and share a thought or what's coming up for you, or type it in in the question panel and I can read it with people. So as I read this list, Think about what it is to be a good coach and how this plays together. So Bloomberg says, in candidates, companies want communication skills. OK, yeah, does that fit with coaching, everyone? Uh, they want analytical thinking. They want people working collaboratively. They want strategic thinking, leadership skills, creative problem solving, motivation and drive, adaptability, quantitative skills. That was interesting to me. Hmm, what do they mean by that? Uh, they want decision making, risk taking. That is so cool, people that are willing to take a risk. Of course, they want work experience. They want a global mindset, and they want entrepreneurship. OK, everyone, think about it. As a coach, how much do the skills you learned and continue developing <laughs> parallel with this? So Bloomberg put these on a table. And what they did is said, OK, less common, more common, and then less desired and more desired. So the left half is less desired, the right half is more desired, the top half is less common, and the bottom half is more common. When you look at it, your sweet spot being the less common, more desired. So it gets into creative problem solving, leadership skills, strategic thinking, and communication skills. OK, are we hitting a button, everyone, <laughs> with coaching? Uh, yeah, I've got one of you typed in an exact match. Thank you exactly what I'm thinking, too. It is so much uh, it's similar, so, so very parallel. And it has me thinking, OK, those of you with coaching, it really opens doors in so many different areas and fields. And this is across the board. Now I'm going to give you another one. And come on, everybody, jump in. Let's hear some thoughts. Type them in, raise your hand, come on. Uh, so National Association of Colleges and Employers. And here's what they said. These are attributes people seek in a candidate's resume. So leadership, ability to work in a team, 
communication skills. There we are again. Problem solving skills. Okay. Strong work ethic analytical quantitative skills, technical skills, then communication skills again. And so the first one it was written, then the second one it was the verbal uh, initiative, people that take initiative. Uh, computer skills, that's more on the technical side. Okay, so that's different. We got that one. Flexibility, adaptability, interpersonal skills, detail-oriented, organizational ability, strategic planning, friendly and outgoing, entrepreneurial and a risk taker, tactful, and creative. And when you look at this list of skills, again, very much paralleling what we know of as coaching skills and coaching competencies. So if we put that in a list, uh, very similar opportunity job network said, here are the top 10 employability skills. So communication skills, <laughs> right at the top of the list. Teamwork, analytical and problem solving skills. Okay, everyone, are you feeling really great about yourself knowing that everywhere you go, you have these skills they want because of your coaching? This is awesome. Uh, personal management, interpersonal effectiveness, the computer and technical literacy, and bottom line, uh, especially if you did the master coach training, you learned a lot of that simply by virtue of being in the program. It was a, a sideline to what we did. Uh, the leadership and management skills, learning skills, love that one, and academic competence and reading and math, and then strong work values. Okay, so look at this and really hone in on how does this fit with what you've developed as a coach. And give me your thoughts on that. Uh, start start typing this in because this is so essential. It's so huge. Uh, Kate is uh, saying she loves the overlap here with the employability skills. Yes, absolutely. All right. Now here's another one. Forbes magazine. What are the skills wanted in job candidates? Number one, the ability to work in a team structure. The ability to make decisions and solve problems, okay, and there was a tie with those top two. Then ability to communicate verbally with people inside and outside the organization, the ability to plan, organize, and prioritize work, the ability to obtain and process information. All right, got it. Click here. All right, ability to analyze quantitative data, the technical knowledge related to the job. <laughs> Look how far down the list that is. <laughs> These other things are so much more important. Uh, proficiency with your computer software programs, ability to create and or edit written reports. Come on, coaches, you do all that note taking, uh, sharing of that with your clients, and then your ability to sell and influence others. So look at these top ones. And again, this overlap with how we function as a coach. So yes, it's team structure. Well, think about it. In coaching, what do you, what do, you do? You partner with your client. And think about the group coaching work that we do. Your ability to make decisions and solve problems. Well, coaching is focused on what people want and how they're going to get there. And there's a lot of exploration in that space. The communication, et cetera, it goes on. Now, Let's shift. These are skills for job candidates. Let's go now. Oh, good. Great. Now we're starting to get some comments in. Um, so it looks like we've got uh, both Kate and Ellen typing in. Come on, everyone. There's so many more of you here. All right. So, so much of our lives, personal and work, this is from Kate, by the way, has to do with communication, interaction with others, and how applicable these are to effective coaching. Yeah. Just like you said, we partner with our clients. Uh, and then Ellen said the soft skills are the hardest ones, and coach training increases these soft skills. Absolutely. And look at the predominance of the soft skills in these lists. And the reason for that is very often employers say, okay, well, we can train people on the hard skills. <laughs> it's the soft skills that we want them coming to the table with. You know, the specific things for the job, whether it's software or uh, job-related skills, yeah, that's trainable. The soft skills, that's tougher to develop. 
So it's huge that you bring this to the table already. All right, uh, looking for skills that impact success. This uh, was a post on dailyworth.com, and here's what they said. Uh, number one, emotional intelligence. Number two on there, your ownership. Okay, wait a minute, what do we do in coaching? Who owns it? Yeah, we work with the client, so they really own it for themselves. And that means as coaches, we get that too. <laughs> it's about staying calm, love that. Openness to feedback, really, really good. That's part of how we learn coaching, and it's part of how we function as coaches. Uh, the polite assertiveness, coach training includes assertiveness training, uh, the decency and the integrity. Again, all of this is right in keeping with what you focused on developing as a coach. Uh, ownership equals personal accountability, yes. Absolutely, good point on that. Awesome. So these are skills that impact your success, whatever you do. And you've developed them in your coach training process. All right, let's keep going. Another article was uh, money.usnews.com, and here's a blog post they had. And they listed the top 10 skills uh, to be successful. So. Sales skills, and you know, here's a funny thing about sales skills. If you are actually in business as yourself as a coach, a lot of people say, oh gosh, I hate selling myself, and the reality is that's how you stay in business as a coach. You put yourself out there and let people know who you are, that you're available, what you offer. So it's a huge part of your success as a coach, and bottom line, it impacts people in all career fields because ultimately you're selling yourself as an employee, you're selling your ideas, your work, etc. Transferable skills, I love that. What we're talking about in this very conversation, the whole focus of this is how transferable your coaching skills are in every other area. The ability to ask. Okay, this is great. So yes, they want people on the job to be asking questions, asking for help, asking for information, et cetera, et cetera. Guess what you learn as a coach? How to ask powerful questions. So you know how to ask questions. The ability to code, okay, that's interesting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's completely gonna be a technical skill and increasingly it's significant uh, because of how much we are online and on the internet. Here comes a big one for us, communication skills, and then right in keeping with that, interpersonal skills. So again, we're right on track with what coaching is all about. Uh, let's see, uh, <laughs> Kate and Ellen, I'm loving this. You two are great. Come on, everyone, join them. So Kate said, sales skills can be done from perspective of expertise with humility. Having confidence with your skills is absolutely okay. How else can we effectively help our coaching clients? Love the comment, love the question, how you're really highlighting that. So that's a great uh, demonstration of that. So awesome, thank you for that. Okay, project management skills. Well, think about what happens in coaching. You're working with different people on whatever it is they want to work through and accomplish, and you're maintaining that ongoing progress report, accountability, et cetera. This is awesome. Uh, let's see, Tracy said, we have a hiring matrix that matches almost exactly, and we have aligned to identifying and retaining high performers to make our succession planning starting from the beginning. This is awesome. And it parallels so directly with what we do as coaches. All right. Also, the ability to be a self-starter. And as a coach, what are you doing? You're working with clients and putting them in charge of that. So you're doing it for yourself as a coach, and you're empowering others to do that as well. The ability to be curious. Well, of course we are. That's what we do as coaches. And the ability to drive results. That's why people hire us as coaches, because we're driving those results. It's so fun to see the parallels here. All right, parade.com. Here's another post, 10 skills. Ability to prioritize, work well in teams, organizational awareness, effective 
problem solving. Again, that's, this is what we do, right? Self-awareness, that's actually part of our ethics and our competencies. Uh, being proactive, the ability to influence, effective decision making, learning agility, and tech savvy. So again, a huge parallel to how we function and operate as coaches. Now, here's an article that talked about skills from entry level to the executive level across the board. And this comes from mindtools.com. So this is a site we look at a lot as coaches. Uh, and let me read uh, Ellen's comment here. Think about how coaching can make a huge difference in someone's life. That is the value you offer as a coach. It is easier to keep in mind that what you offer as a coach is life-changing and life-affirming. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. Okay. Mind tools. What did they say about skills that make a difference at every level? Let's go. Personal accountability. Okay. And again, how do we support this as coaches? Think about this. The degree of collaboration. Interpersonal negotiation skills. Conflict resolution, we even cover that in coach training. People's adaptability and flexibility, that's a huge part of who we are and how we are as coaches. The clarity of communication, the creative thinking, inclusion, and <laughs> I love it, they even spelled it out for us, everyone, coaching and mentoring. These are skills that make a difference at every level, absolutely across the board. All right, Saba.com talks about leadership, the one skill needed at all levels of your organization. And yes, you guessed it, everyone. I know you knew I was going here. Leadership essentially is coaching. <laughs> <laughs> As coaches, we're demonstrating everything they talk about leaders having. So what is it? Here's what they said. What companies need, and of course I want to change that word, I know you know that, to compete and win are leaders at all levels, which means employees who are informed, what do we do as coaches? We're curious, we have questions, right? Enabled and empowered. So having the tools and the authority to move the company towards its goals. So of course we develop that in ourselves as coaches and that is in fact what we do with the people we serve when we do the coaching. And we're making that kind of difference. Now, here's another one. So they looked at all of these different skills and they said a degree of importance at each of the different levels. So if you have someone that inspires and motivates others, it's important and then they rank it based on top, senior, middle, and supervisory levels. So think about this list. They're showing these are important at the different levels and think again about how these parallel who we are and what we do as coaching. So we inspire and motivate others. We display high integrity and honesty. We solve problems. We analyze issues. We drive for results. We communicate powerfully, and they add the word and prolifically. If you're blogging or publishing or putting other information out, yes, that makes sense. We collaborate. We do teamwork. We build relationships. Uh, and it says technical or professional expertise. Okay, love that. We develop strategic perspective. We develop others. We take initiative and we empower others to do that. We innovate. We champion change. We connect the group to the outside world by expanding their thinking and exploring different perspectives. We challenge them so they're establishing those stretch goals. And of course, even our code of ethics calls on us for this. We practice self-development. That's why we're all here, right? <laughs> the self-development piece. So right in keeping, again, 
with our skills as a coach. Uh, Ellen added in, this is the servant leader model, which is the most effective. Absolutely agree with that. That's, <laughs> that's how we function. All right. So thinking of all those lists I just shared with you, I'm going to give you the review of the 11 core competencies so that you can start drawing those parallels. Uh, first, let's see, Samson and, and Carol typed in, I testified to the fact that possessing coaching skills is an all-around asset that sets you apart in whatever role you occupy. This is why I strive to continue to sharpen my coaching skills. And just knowing the person that typed this in, they're in the corporate space and at a very high level. So I'm loving that confirmation uh, given that person's background and where they're at. So this is awesome. All right. A reminder, refresher for you. Uh, let's see, Joyce, you've got your hand up. Let me uh, unmute you for a second if you want to jump in. You've got yourself muted, so you've got to click on your microphone. Happy to hear your comment. Uh, okay, Joy uh, there you go, Joyce, go ahead. Hi, everyone. I was trying to get myself, uh, trying to get myself. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Very, very beneficial to me. But I think one of the struggles that um, personally is trying to, um, I guess, trying to under, like, not fully understand the situation, like when you're trying to, to coach, I think being able to discern different things, even though you can communicate, Communication is important, but just discerning and just picking up on different gestures and moves and the way people, um, body movements and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So Joyce is sharing, thank you Joyce, she's sharing that uh, big challenge area for her is really discerning different things and understanding that with people. So as coaches, a couple of things, sometimes how much we know and understand may or may not make a difference. When we ask questions, we ask for the benefit of the client. So if it's helping them to really define it and explore it, great. And then the other piece I want to throw out is that 80% of the time, coaching's on the telephone. So we don't even have body language we're dealing with, and the focus is really on what people are saying and how they're saying it and what they're not saying. And that really opens up the doors. You get a much stronger process because of that. All right, so let's look at what are the competencies to develop as a coach. And it, those of you who have completed your training, I know this is a great review for you. So setting the foundation includes meeting ethical guidelines and professional standards, and then establishing the coaching agreement, which means being really clear on what it is we're focused on and working on. And this is in keeping in many ways with a lot of what we looked at on our list. Now you get into even more. Think about your interpersonal relationships, uh, so co-creating the relationship, the competencies of establishing trust and intimacy, and then coaching presence, being there and in the moment with them, completely focused on the client. Then communicating effectively. We saw communication on almost every one of those lists That's a huge area. The act of listening that we do as coaches, which is so completely different uh, than what we think of as listening in other areas. The powerful questioning, again, how we ask those questions, and our clear, direct communication, back to that assertiveness. Then you have creating awareness, that's the exploration, the thinking strategically, uh, thinking technically, etc. designing specific actions, planning and goal setting, and managing progress and accountability, all serving to drive things forward. So as an example, let's take this list and put it next to the list we just looked at on skills that were important from entry level on. <laughs> and start thinking about, okay, how do you parallel that? Well, inspire and motivate others. Well, if they, and look at display high integrity, okay, so inspire and motivate others. If you establish uh, the purpose of what we're here to work on, you create that trust and intimacy and you're present to them, that's foundational to inspiring them. Then you actively listen, ask those powerful questions, and in that process, create awareness and empower them in terms of their goals, their actions, and you're there as their accountability partner. Well, that inspires and motivates. You display high integrity and honesty. 
back to our ethical guidelines. Solve problems and analyze issues. That's a big part of what you're doing. Asking the questions, exploring the possibilities. Uh, we've got the communication here, the collaboration. <laughs> parallels directly to what we're talking about in terms of coaching competencies. So it's so clear to me and hopefully to you, <laughs> you can let me know your thought on that, on how completely coaching skills parallel with what's wanted in a job candidate, with what's wanted for leadership, and what makes a difference in terms of success in the workplace. So what does that really mean? Well, think about it. Our definition of coaching is that it's a strategic partnership. And we as coaches empower the clients so they clarify their goals, create their action plans, move past their obstacles, and achieve what they choose. And how, what does that equate to in the workplace skills? We inspire and motivate. There's integrity involved, solving the problems. This is that same list right from what's happening in the workplace. And coaching is a skill, okay? Let's parallel the coaching competencies once again to the diagram that we saw a moment ago. And ultimately, the coaching skills parallel what people want in job candidates. So if we summarize that, Think about it. Look at your definition for coaching and look at what people want in a job candidate, what people want in employees. And it parallels right with what we do as coaches, both for ourselves in our own skill development and in the work that we do with the people we serve. So what does that mean? Mm. Sorry, I think I got ahead of myself on this one. Yeah, coaching ultimately is an essential skill for success in all professions and jobs. It is also essential in families and in the community. So what we learn in coaching makes a difference in every area of our life. Okay, resources for you. I know we've just got a couple of minutes left. So, of course, the International Coach Federation, Center for Coaching Certification, and Center for Coaching Solutions. So, International Coach Federation is at coachfederation.org. I think a lot of you are members. If you are not, if you're putting yourself out there as a coach, this is huge. You do want to make sure you're either completing the additional training hours, if that's uh, the missing step, move toward that membership of the International Coach Federation. Uh, resource for you, we want to be available to you, and of course the focus with Center for Coaching Certification is your training, and then the support and resources for graduates. And then Center for Coaching Solutions. Uh, we are a resource if you want to or outsource, if you're developing a coaching program and you want partnering on that, if you want coaching services or if you want to bring coach training into your organization. Uh, and then resources with both of these, the blogs, the books, the webinars, and that outsourcing. So the blog, new articles every week, our coaching perspective series, and by the way, number six is super close to coming out, uh, so you've got the first five available on Amazon now. These webinars we do every month. If you have a question, you just want to call or email, please feel free. We're here, we're available, we want to support that. Uh, in terms of outsourcing, we help with coaching programs, training, and then actually providing coaches. Uh, next steps for you, all right for yourself, whatever it is you're doing. First off, uh, as is the norm, I'm offering those of you who are here uh, an opportunity to schedule 30 minutes and have a conversation. If you want to dig into something specific for yourself, get more questions answered, uh, do make sure you're choosing resources that make sense for you. Plan your process. Uh, as a coach, as somebody who is applying their coaching skills in whatever you do, implement your strategy, and that's how you move toward those results. So thank you, everybody, for being here. I appreciate your time and participation. Yes, uh, the recording to this will go up on the YouTube channel, and I will send you all a link 
to it. Uh, so that is coming out to you. When you get that email, if you want the access to my calendar, let me know. I'll send you a link for that. Uh, I appreciate your thank yous in the question panel, so I've got several of you saying that. Glad this was uh, good information for you. Thank you as well. If you have any additional questions, please uh, let me know. And those of you that I know have uh, scheduled things, please, we, we are complete in that regard. So thank you, everybody, and have a fabulous weekend.